Welcome to the place where we learn about and learn from the leaders in our field who are powering human creativity. I am Aaron Dworkin, and this is Arts Engines. <laughs> Thanks again for joining me here on Arts Engines. Today's guest is Leslie B. Dunner, who serves as conductor of the Interlochen Arts Academy Orchestra. Dr. Dunner, welcome to the show. Thank you, Aaron. It's so nice to be joining you today. And, you know, I am beyond thrilled, honored to be able to have you on the show. I have been very, very lucky and blessed to actually be able to see your talents and leadership up close. Uh, and not just, you know, in terms of education, but your baton and uh, your time leading the Sphinx Symphony and pretty much every other major orchestra around the country. Um, and now here you are in this unbelievably prestigious role at my uh, alma mater, I credit the Interlock and Arts Academy with saving my life. I went there for my junior and senior year. So we're so excited that they helped us to co-curate for this show. So I am beyond excited to be able to talk with you. This is uh, great. And, and so what I thought maybe we just start out with is um, just for any of our audience who may not just be familiar, any kind of just overview of what you would want to share about especially the Interlock and uh, Academy Orchestra and kind of how things are uh, getting getting going for this year? Well, if I may, I'd like to give a little bit of um, background for the Interlochen Arts Academy, specifically the um, Academy Orchestra within that. But we are an institution that has seven different disciplines, which includes music, dance, drama, film and new media, um, literature, interdisciplinary arts, which is fabulous. And we also have I don't remember what this, what's the seventh one? <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to think yeah. about the seventh one. It'll come yeah. to me. No, totally. Yeah, no, it's an extraordinary breadth. It really is. And it's actually one of the things I found when I was a student there was that unlike where I came from in Hershey, Pennsylvania, where there were all of these social cliques, I got to interlock and it was just about what do you do? Oh, are you in theater? Are you in dance? Are are you in music? And if in music, which you know area of music, it was about your arts discipline that kind of was associated with your identity, which was the first time I experienced that in life, which I I loved. And theater is the seventh. Ah, Thank yes. Ah, great. And now we have musical theater as its own division. Oh, awesome. Great. Awesome. But the orchestra is very busy. Um, we do a shared concert with our wind symphony at the beginning of the first semester and the second semester. We then do two full concerts. We then play for the Nutcracker Ballet, which is produced by our dance department. That takes care of the fall. And then in the second semester, we start with a full orchestra concert. We are now looking at sharing a concert with the Wind Symphony again, so that we can maybe um, streamline what, what goes on for the students who are taking auditions for college during that period. Um, we have the New York tour coming up this year, but after that, we have another concert in April. Um, next year, we are going to be doing a, an opera in addition, and we do another full musical, and then we have what's called festival, where all of the arts disciplines perform um, in the evenings for parents and family and friends who come in for commencement. And then we do an honors convo pre um, presentation as well. So it's a busy semester for our students. It's truly extraordinary. And I was wondering kind of on that front, if you could share, you know, like my experience, what I felt was that, okay, here we were in this orchestra as, as high school students, but from my perspective, playing at a fully professionalized level and touring and just kind of curious at leading the orchestra, how do you look at and balance kind of the professional level that everything is occurring on, but also the educational role that you have, the artistic role, just wondering kind of as a leader, how do you see that and view that? That's a really good question because we seem to think of ourselves 
on the model of a conservatory, but at a pre-conservatory level. And yet we have an expectation of our students to play as if they're post-secondary um, level. And that is one of the conundrums. The students, I think, thrive on it. Their days start at 8.30 and they end at 6 p.m. So we have a very long academic day compared to most high schools. Usually we try not to have faculty involved on Saturdays, but we do have faculty involved on Sundays unless we have Saturday concerts and then we have faculty involved on Saturdays. Uh, the students have to balance all of the traditional academic credits and academic courses and prerequisites that you have in every other school, in addition to what they do for us in the arts. So it's very rigorous and it, it really calls for our students to mature very quickly. Yeah. And I think that's the goal. Yep, exactly. And I know it was my uh, experience there. It was like this extraordinary artistic experience, right? Um, and just literally world class and playing in world class venues and all of that. And then these in incredible academics along with it. To this day, I remember my Man and Destiny class uh, with, with Mr. Hintz uh, and writing my destiny paper, like trying to create what my destiny would be. I was a little off, but uh, but it really, it just was a, this extraordinary, unique uh, experience for sure. It's great. You know, we have students who, who take courses in forensic science, for example, which you don't expect to see at the high school level in any school. And then they'll go to a summer festival where they're playing in, you know, in Japan or in Europe. And then they come back the next year and they're majoring in one of the arts disciplines, but they're taking advanced calculus. Right. It's wild. It's wild. So you have many exciting things that are happening with the orchestra. I'm wondering if you could share, obviously, so many of our audience are, you know, leading at institutions where they do various partnerships, collaborations, uh, and you have one with the New York Phil. And just wondering if you could share a little more about uh, the work that you're doing. Yes, we have one concert that we're doing in conjunction with members of the New York Philharmonic, and those are going to be members of the Philharmonic who are alumni of the Interlaken Academy. So that's pretty exciting. It's going to be alums of the Academy as well as the summer camp. And we are doing a program that features music of living Black American composers. Those composers, I would like to mention them, are Valerie Coleman, um, Jonathan um, Bailey Holland, we have Mary Watkins and then Adolphus Hailstork. Um, I'm sorry, we don't have Adolphus Hailstork, John Wineglass. I'm sorry, I have two awesome. programs with the New York Philharmonic and my other program has Adolphus Hailstork, who is also a living composer. And the Philharmonic um, shared a concert last year where they performed at Carnegie Hall for his 80th birthday. Wow. We are doing a very large choral work with, with the Philharmonic for Hale Stork, but with the Academy Orchestra, we are also doing a very large choral work in conjunction with students from the LaGuardia High School, which is one of our partner institutions. The New York Philharmonic is working with us to offer 30 scholarships for summer camp, full scholarships, which is fantastic. So it increases the um, relationship and the collaborative collaborative effort that we have with the Philharmonic and new partner organizations in education within the city of New York. It's truly extraordinary. And obviously, ultimately, the impact for all of the, the students involved is, is just incalculable, I think. Um, and also, of course, it is, you know, so wonderful and amazing that you're able to perform these works and especially uh, by living uh, Black composers and just wondering, um, as a leader, kind of having been able to see a breadth over decades of repertoire that's being performed and kind of where our field's at, I was just wondering, What's your current perspective? Obviously, I think, right, we've all seen a, a pretty significant shift, it seems, in the past few years um, of more works being brought to light, more composers being engaged and supported. But I'm curious what, what you think ultimately, are you optimistic or pessimistic um, about the uh, level of inclusion um, that our field is currently bringing? I am cautiously optimistic. We are seeing um, a greater percentage of people of color, not just African-American, but of color of people with disabilities, um, people who are gender neutral, who are much more present and are getting an opportunity to be seen, which I think is important, not just seen and heard, but seen. It's important for people to recognize what we look like. Uh, so I'm cautiously optimistic about that because of the times we're in, but also 
the word caution is there because the social climate that this country is going through is not necessarily uh, moving us forward yet. We have uh, a lot of work to do on the social side of things in terms of our social advocacy specifically. And finding a way to help people understand that it is important for us to find our commonalities. Yeah, absolutely. It's so, so important. Um, and it's it's so incredible to be able to have you in this role, not only bringing your artistry, but the impact you're having on so many young people and preparing them uh, to be professionals in our field. Unfortunately, we are just about out of time, but I always like to ask my guests, and uh, you know, because they're especially they're all extraordinary leaders. Um, there's got to be tough times. There's got to be the breadth of work that, that you're doing. There's got to be days like, oh my gosh, certain challenges may seem insurmountable or can't be overcome. And just wondering, where do you turn to or as a leader, um, what do you do during the toughest of times to uh, either find strength, inspiration, um, or solace? I dance. <laughs> Surprise. It came from, uh, well, I have a long history with dance, specifically African dance, because I grew up African dancing. But when I was a full-time caregiver for my dad, I found it very intense. And while I was in New York City, I saw an advertisement for um, an ad hoc dance company to be made to open the River to River Summer Festival in New York City. I went down and auditioned, and they took 200 dancers People who are trained, people who are untrained, the goal was to have an experience where you got out of whatever your regular routine was and just shared the experience of being together. And that made me realize that dance, which had been such an important component in my early life, was now an important component to help de-stress. So I actually, I take a dance class, which meets four days a week with the students on campus. It is just truly extraordinary. I am so uh, grateful and appreciative that uh, I've been able to benefit um, from your mentorship and, and our friendship over so many years and seeing the impact on the field is truly uh, amazing. Leslie B. Dunner, you truly are one of the arts engines who is powering human creativity in our world. Thank you so much for being on the show. And thank you for all that you do. I remember when the concept of Sphinx was just a concept when you were <laughs> in Michigan and I was in Detroit and look True. at what you created. You have created um, something that is iconic now. Oh. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.